Hi folks, uh, I'm Reverend Tony Cant. I'm the chaplain at Anglia Ruskin University in Chelmsford in Essex. Been doing this since September last year. Um, so there's some questions that uh, that my good friend Lewis has brought along for me to uh, have a go at answering that might help you to um, uh, discover more. I think about the um, the whole thing of uh, mission shaped ministry and what that means in today's world. So, uh, what was the first question? What, what's mission? Yeah, so yeah, tell us a bit about your kind of understanding of what is mission. Um, it's pretty simple, really. Uh, that theologically is, is based upon the idea of the incarnation, that Jesus came and lived among us uh, in a certain time, in a certain place. Um, so in other words, God didn't sit in heaven and just um, expect everything to happen. He got involved with us. In the person of Jesus, and that's the um, that's the idea of, and and the, and the mission actually, the commission that Jesus gave to us as disciples to go into all the world, to go, not to um, sit around and do nothing. So uh, mission is about um, following the example of God as revealed in Jesus, and getting involved in, uh, well, proclaiming um, the kingdom of God, of doing the works that are consistent with the kingdom of God. And being involved with humanity in the name of God, in whatever context you find yourself, uh, doing all kinds of different things, but things that are centered around um, trying to help people experience God's love for themselves uh, and drawing them into a relationship with God uh, in the way that Jesus did mm -hmm. uh, when he was about. Right. So, uh, that's and, and Archbishop Rowan Williams said a good thing about mission. You know, he said, uh, mission is simply about trying to see what God is already doing in, in the world and joining in. So the thing is that people sometimes have an idea that I have to go somewhere to take God into that situation. Well, that's a mistake because God's Spirit is at work everywhere in spite of us. And so when we go into a new situation in the name of God, we need to be looking for what God is already doing, because He's there. He will be doing stuff. He's not abandoned His creation. And uh, He will be doing stuff. Um, and it might be uh, not what we expect, but it will be there. And it's simply a question of finding out what is He doing and joining in with Him, because then you're on a winner. Yeah, brilliant. I'm just going to pick up on something you said. We've kind of already talked about a few times. You, you mentioned um, context. and. How, how important is context to mission? Um, I think it's just about everything. Context is incredibly important because it's different everywhere and we all live in different contexts. This university campus is a very different context to what Walthamstow was and this university campus is very different to our sister campus in Cambridge. Uh, and so you can't do the same kinds of things in the different campuses. Mm -hmm. Context helps you to have a bit of a, a sense of the shape of things, um, which in one place will be different to another. So, for example, um, here in, um, in Chelmsford, on this campus, uh, most of the students are uh, commuters. They uh, are non-residential, whereas the opposite is true in Cambridge. So the feel of the place is different um, and trying to do things um, with commuter students who just come in for their class and then go away again, if you try and do residential type things that work in a residential campus here, then it won't work. Um, so you've got to think about what is the reality of the context within which you live. What is meaningful and then within that context, what is meaningful to the folks who are part of that context. So where you are in Alderholt as a rural community, you wouldn't just try and pick up something that worked in an urban context and try and trans transplant it into a rural context, holus bolus. You might translate the principles, but the, the shape that that takes in a rural community will be very different because the people are different. Rural people are actually quite different to, um, to urban people and vice versa. Things that matter to rural people don't matter to, um, to urban people and vice versa. So you've got to try and find where are the meaningful connections that that context shows um, 
so that at those connections between you as a, a person of God um, and what um, a person who doesn't know God uh, is about in those contexts, where those connections are meaningful, that you can say something or be something meaningful in mm. context is incredibly important. Mm. Okay, so moving to um, when you were uh, working in Walthamstow, uh, one of our questions we had, and I can see you wearing your dog collar today, um, did you used to uh, wear your dog collar when you were around and about working in uh, the market, and uh, what was your role? You are the manager of the farmer's market. Yeah, I managed you? the farmer's yeah. market. No, I didn't wear my dog collar around Walthamstow, um, uh, and I do wear it here. It has some, It has meaning here where it had less meaning there. Um, here, if I haven't got the dog collar on, then no one will know who I am in the sense that people walk around, they see a dog collar. I'm the only one that's wearing a dog collar around here on campus. Um, and they know that there's a chaplain around, so, oh, that must be the chaplain. And then you introduce yourself as the chaplain. Yeah. So it has a, it has a currency here that I don't think it really had in Walthamstow. So I didn't wear it in Walthamstow. Um, but people would be intrigued when I'd talk to them. They'd say, well, what do you do? And I'd say, well, I'm the local vicar. Um, they'd say, oh, are you? And because I don't look like a vicar, a standard kind of a vicar, or sound like a standard kind of a vicar, um, while they were, there, were, there was a kind of a cognitive dissonance happening in their mind. Hang on, you say you're a vicar. You don't look like a vicar. You don't sound like a vicar. You don't dress like a vicar. But you're telling me you're a vicar. And here you are managing a farmer's market on a Sunday morning when everyone else is in church. What's going on? And so there were all of a sudden there was this um, space within which you could have a conversation about um, what does it mean to be like you know a vicar in a church here with no building in a in a, in a market situation, um, and people were incredibly open to that conversation, and they would want to have it, they'd want to initiate it, you know. Um, so wearing a dog collar, uh, not wearing a dog collar in in Walthamstow, um, actually worked because of the context context was different 